Welcome to Whiskey Talk, Malts and Music, brought to you by the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, here in the vaults in Leith. My name is Rick Galloway, I'm a broadcaster, author, musician and music journalist and the idea of this podcast is to bring together single cast, cast strength whiskies and music. I ask creative people to pair up four drams with four pieces of music, we discuss their selections and we go off on tangents into their lives and careers. I hope you enjoy. Slan Welcome to Malts and Music, the Whiskey Sisters, Inca and Jen. How's it going? Very good, very good. Thank you. Thanks it's very for having nice us. to see you. Yeah. Okay, thank uh, you for having us. Oh no, thanks for coming along. Uh, we're going to talk about your wonderful podcast and all things that you're up to. But first and foremost, how did you find the process of taking a whiskey that perhaps you haven't tasted before and then pairing out with music, Jen? <laughs> Oh, well, I was like unsure at first. I thought, how am I going to get on with this? But during the process, I thought I found my sacred purpose. I was born for this. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is just bringing together two great loves. And I just almost like wanted to keep going after mm-hmm. the fourth jam. So I absolutely loved the process. Oh, that's what we like to hear. And how about you, Inka? Yeah, the same. I feel like I was going into a rabbit hole of <laughs> lots of like, I had certain songs in mind that I kind of wanted to feature. But then when I tried the whiskies and just different th- things just comes to your head and you're like, no, oh, yes. this is amazing. It's yeah. funny that, isn't it? I mean, this whole Malts and Music podcast and uh, has taken off because a year and a bit ago, um, the Whiskey Society, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society here in Leith asked me to pair up the 12 flavour profiles with 12 music genres. I put together a playlist, I wrote about each one. And I remember the same, I was thinking, oh, this one's, you know, young and sprightly I'll pair it with so and so and then when you actually taste it you think no it doesn't go with that it changes absolutely yeah Um, you're obviously massive music fans it's apparent in your podcast as well and we're going to go through (laughs) because we we haven't actually had two simultaneous guests on a podcast before so we'll get two choices for every dram and uh, yeah there's maybe a bit of a you know kind of lean towards rock music (laughs) you're rockers aren't you Absolutely. We kind of try to like mix it up a little bit, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You oh. know, there's actually, because I come from Finland, so obviously that there's a lot of rock and heavy metal. Mm. And there's more like heavy metal bands per capita in Finland than anywhere else in the world. <laughs> so it's in your blood. <laughs> um, and as whiskey fans, just very generally, what would you tend to go for? What kind of style, a Highland, a Speyside, a, a sort of smoky Isla malt, what would you go for? I think um, I'm really enjoying a lot of space sides at the moment mm-hmm. and kind of more sherried is my current preference. Mm-hmm. And you, Inka? Pete Freak. I'm Are a you? Pete Freak, yeah. You're a Pete Freak. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm kind of learning as I go along with whiskey and especially here at the Society, you're spoilt for choice. I'm actually finding getting a bottle of malt from a off license or whatever it's because it, it's not the single cast cast strength stuff i'm kind of like oh, what is this <laughs> yeah. uh, you're spoiled with these cast strength uh, drams let's go for the first one mm-hmm. and we'll get your music choices and your you know your perception of the whiskey and so on as well so we're going for a 4146 first stop which is uh called Deep and dynamic. It's a space side gen. You'll be pleased with that. Uh, Ex Oloroso um, cask, sixty-two point five percent. Now it's, it was bottled at seven years old. I've been told about this, uh, but it was bottled in the eighties, mm-hmm. so there weren't even tasting notes at the whiskey society at that point. So this is, you know, a seven-year-old whiskey bottled many years ago. So um, yeah, distilled. Uh, 2003, so 19 years ago, and it's uh, part of the deep, rich, and dried fruits flavor profile. Right there, we go pouring out that dram. What are you getting on the nose then, Jen? So much, an absolute party on the nose. Mm. A little bit like Inca said earlier, I had sort of certain like musicians or bands and songs in mind. I thought, oh, that would be interesting to pair. But as soon as I stuck my nose in this glass, I was having an absolute party to myself. So (laughs) many different flavours, lots of lovely sweet tones like treacle toffee and um, like different berries. Definitely quite fruity, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
we have a, we have very very limited uh, tasting notes on this because this was bottled before the experts at the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society started doing those colourful um, you know tasting notes. So uh, it says uh, nose juicy fruits rich with plums vanilla and custard taste juicy fruits again and quite syrupy and the finish long warm spicy and custard lingering. Yeah. So I've just had a nose so far. Have you had a sip yet? No. Just Should we go I, in? Yeah. What do you think about the nose, Inca? Well, I was getting like apple strudels, definitely that little like real vanilla, maple syrup, and um, cinnamon rolls. You know those like Scandinavian Nordic cinnamon rolls. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely getting the apple strudel, and I think you know the the berries, as you're saying, and there is that slightly cinnamony. Yeah. Let's go. I'm going in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Slange. Cheers. Slange. Okay, and going back to the sort of original tasting notes, there is a, a certain kind of syrupiness at the back of, but um, it's not. it doesn't feel, even though it's 62.5%, it doesn't feel massively alcoholic, do you? No, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think it goes down very easily for that high ABV. Mm -hmm. It has a nice mouthfeel as well, like a bit of a texture. Yeah, mm -hmm. a bit chewy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's go in for the, because this is malts and music, let's go in for uh, your music choices. Um, Jen, you went for Motley Crue, Dr. <laughs> Feel Good. I was feeling good when I was um, nosing <laughs> and tasting this dram. And I just, for me, there were so much depth of flavours, like the aromas and then the flavours. There was just so much going on. And that for me is Motley Crue. There's a lot going on there, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> Have you been a Motley Crue fan for a while? Because I was at school when Motley Crue were in their heyday. And I remember this coming out. Um, and have you read The Dirt, that yes. book? They should be in prison for that. <laughs> they should. They're not particularly PC. You know, I don't think they've updated um, themselves uh, that much. But yeah, I've been a Motley Crue fan for a long time. Much more Guns N' Roses, but I've always loved Motley Crue. And I love their kind of over-the-top style and so much going on and I this is very much up my street so I kind of you know like the the heavy intro for Dr. Feel yeah. Good I could feel that flowing through my face. <laughs> so so in a way this is a kind of although it's quite as you say chewy and syrupy and, and also fruity on the nose and so on it's a feel good dram this for you. For me very much so and I was kind of imagining a lot of colour and you know it was getting my shoulders going yeah. so yeah I was like I actually had to prompt myself to put this down and go on to the others because I was having a party in this class. Oh wow. Yeah that's, you really loved that. that yeah, uh, yeah so from 1989 <laughs> that's a long time ago Dr Feel Good the album of the same name is all Motley Crue. Um, I can, I can I see your reasoning, Jen. Uh, Inca, what did you go for, and uh, and why? Uh, that was George Michael, Freedom. Mm -hmm. um, but it was mainly just George Michael in general. Like I, I couldn't really decide on the song to be fair, so I just went with Freedom, because I watched his documentary recently, and there was a lot of stuff about the the song. But for me, like deep and dynamic, mm -hmm. that was George Michael. And how the nose is sweet and, you know, there's certain innocence to him mm -hmm. and like good looks and stuff. But then on the palate, it's a bit more spicier. There's like damp leaves. It's a bit mm -hmm. mm, like something, you know, you scratch below the surface and it's not quite how it looks. So that's why I chose. Fair enough. And they're both quite anthemic, those songs as well. And they're both kind of, I mean, Freedom's are obviously a call to arms. It's like a it's you know it's a rallying cry in a way and Dr Feelgood is in its own slightly sleazier kind of way um, so I, I can see although they're completely different kinds of music I can see why there might be some consensus yeah. and, and you've just said damp leaves on mm. the on the palate I'm, I'm getting a bit of that actually now there's <laughs> yeah. a slight bitterness in amongst the fruitiness and the syrupiness there is a bit of bitterness on the palate. You Definitely. Know. I had a kind of like chocolate brownie, but with chilies in it. Not quite a chilli kick, but something kind of like damp and sweet, but with a kick to it. Mm. Mm. Well, um, we've never had anything, I don't think, quite as rock as Dr. Feelgood. But that's not going to be the last rock song that we're going to talk about. <laughs> uh, but just going off the music and the whiskey just for a second, how do you guys know each other? Well, uh, through our men, basically. <laughs> through your through your men, okay. 
after okay. her plethora of men. No, yeah. Yeah. her <laughs> other half. Other other. Halves, yeah. Right. Yeah. So they kind of, oh, I don't know. They just introduced us, mm-hmm. and we instantly got into like talking about whiskey, Guns and Roses, how we wear like this high heels for Guns and Roses concert, concert, and it was chaos. <laughs> and we both love Bunawin. Right, Bunahaven yeah. and rock music brought you together. Yes. Bunahaven and Guns N' Roses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, so so, so your, your other halves knew each other. You, you were introduced and you just hit it off. Yeah, instantly. Right, and you, you're from Finland. I've been to Finland once, actually, to a music conference called Music and Media, or Musiki i Media, I think it was called, <laughs> uh, in Tampere. Okay. And, um, and then I went to Helsinki as well. Beautiful country, absolutely stunning. Um, are you still based there? No, I'm based in Italy. Oh, right. Okay, and what do you do in Italy? Well, I kind of do this kind of stuff, but yeah. like just remotely. Mm-hmm. So I create content for brands and write article, uh, like articles about booze and do little bits and bobs and the oh. podcast. Okay, well, I may ask you a bit more about that um, later on. Jen, whereabouts are you based? So I'm based just outside Glasgow. Mm-hmm. I've always lived in Scotland, um, but kind of grew up in the West Coast. Most of my childhood was spent on the Isle of Mull, mm-hmm. but near Glasgow now. Okay, cool. And so you keep in touch kind of remotely, but then eventually, well, every now and again, every few months you get together yeah. and record some podcasts and so on. Yeah, well, we actually record most of our podcasts yeah. digitally, don't we? Although when we're together, we might record together, but we plan yeah. mischief in various locations and meet up regularly. So you go on <laughs> trips together. Yeah. yeah. So tell me about your like your love of whiskey. Where did it come from? Some people say, oh, my dad or my grandfather or someone like that used to like drink it and, and I got a little sniff and then had a little taste and fell in love with it. How, how, how was it for you, Jen? How did you fall in love with whiskey? So, like many Scots, not that I'm advocating, you know, drinking at a young age, but as a, a teenager, I discovered whiskey, loved the taste, mm-hmm. um, absolutely loved it, but didn't respect the kind of power of whiskey yeah. and had some almighty hangovers. So <laughs> yeah. I kind of thought, I'm not quite ready for this. And I, I wouldn't say it put me off, but I just kind of put it to the side. And it was maybe about seven or eight years ago, um, at a whiskey tasting actually back on the Isle of Mull I feel I kind of entered the world of whiskey like from a different angle again with like such an appreciation of you know the whole process but that um, although it wasn't that qualitative the whiskey I, I had many years ago I just really enjoyed the kind of flavours and I just thought I, I want to learn more I want to know more I want to be in this magical world yeah I feel I feel similar I, I feel the same um, Inca how about you where was where did your love of whiskey come I remember hearing on a podcast that your mother used to give, yeah. you, give you little tasters of it Is that- yeah just a little bit and like tea when I wasn't feeling so well so you know curious little is your mum Scottish by any chance <laughs> no <laughs> but like a, you know hot toddies they're good for you mm. um, but yeah that was just like my first tasters and then I went through a phase of like bourbon when I was a bit more rock and roll mm-hmm. um, but now basically just through my work because I write about spirits all the other spirits but I didn't write anything about whiskey or scotch so then I just felt like I need I to know to. something about yeah, this yeah and exactly and like my husband is from Glasgow he's Scottish and you know, like, this is a like, good chance and I should connect with this. So, yeah, that's how I kind of got introduced to Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. And they've been super helpful for, mm-hmm. well, for like, like hosting all these tastings and I've learned so much through them. And then just going to different distilleries and then and I actually f- end up loving it. Do you both feel quite knowledgeable about it now? Or, or where, because, where, you know, there are total experts out there that yeah. can just sniff a, a, a malt and tell you exactly where it's from and etc etc where do you feel your your confidence and your knowledge is i would say pretty good probably not quite that good but then even on the podcast if we don't know something we do say that we don't actually know this yeah. or we're going to research it so we're not trying to pretend to know everything mm-hmm. and there's always room for growth in whiskey you always know something more of course and I feel I've learned a lot from, from you, Inca. I, I feel very much like enthusiast at the kind of beginner stages um, and just kind of at the early stages of developing my knowledge, high on passion, 
moderate on knowledge. I'm probably a bit more like you. <laughs> Jen. And my knowledge is building. Yeah. And um, as I say, you know, coming to the society regularly and so on, I, I learn more and more, not just from tasting them, but also from talking to yeah, the people exactly. involved in the industry mm-hmm. and the people that work here. Or mm-hmm. yeah, um, yeah. So oh, that's it's it's really interesting. Um, and Buna Haven is the one that brought you together. Yeah, I think it was kind of our first whiskey. Like it was first scotch that I tried properly that I remember thinking oh my god and because when I first tried to get into whiskey I stupidly went to Isla <laughs> and like Peter whiskey is you know it's a bit scary at first so maybe that's why I kind of connected with Buna but now I've done a full circle and I actually now you're into the yeah. you're a peat freak yeah. as you were saying yeah. yeah I think that's that's um right isn't it I mean if you go I mean some people will go straight into a you know, an, an ancient Laphroaig or Lagavulin and yeah. fall in love with it. Kaulila is my favourite at the moment. Um, but some people, oh, no, no, it's too medicinal. It's, you know, I need to find a way into it. Uh, and sometimes they don't even find a way into it. Yeah, yeah. But there's so many different levels of peat. Mm. Like you don't have to go full on Laphroaig, intense medicinal. It can be like sweet, nice yeah. peat or some whiskies that are a mixture of peat and non-peated whiskies and things like that. So. Mm-hmm. Well, and as the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society profiles have, they have lightly peated, peated and heavily peated. Um, and there are so many whiskies that fit all these three categories. And even as you go through the other flavor profiles, there are, that you can sense little bits of peat here and there in some of the whiskies. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, how's this one going down? How's the deep and dynamic going down? All together perfectly. I could stay here all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we've got Motley Crue, followed by George Michael or the other way around whoever um how was your lockdown by the way I know it's sort of behind us but you managed to keep doing the podcast through it we only started in January actually. right okay so, so you yeah. and so you were planning it during lockdown I suppose right yeah 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 Right. My lockdown was okay. I like my day job is not in whiskey, and I was working throughout the lockdown, so life was kind of much the same. So mm-hmm. I feel kind of really lucky in that regard. All right, so you just carried on regardless. Yeah, yeah. and I was quite usual. busy. Yeah, because everyone was marketing booze alcohol online, so I had quite a lot of work. Right. Okay. That's <laughs> good. Yeah, I suppose the booze industry did yeah. well. That was one of the industries that <laughs> yeah. probably did better than anyone else. Uh, uh, it's typical for a Maltz and Music podcast with Vic Galloway. Um, I've finished my dram already. Um, I'll have a little dab of water and I think we should move on to dram number two. Apart from anything else, if if we don't sort of skip through these, this is going to be like a three hour episode, isn't it? With two songs from each of you. Uh, but anyway, that was absolutely delicious. Yeah. Um, and yeah, some, some, some good observations and some good rock and roll. <laughs> And yeah, Freedom, that's a song I haven't heard for a while as well. Yeah. Um, okay, we're going into dram number two. Let me just have some water. So this is a 15003 we're going for next. It's called Conversation Lubrication, which is uh, good news. It's from Ireland, it's from West Cork. It's a first fill X rye barrel. It's only <clears throat> 57.3%. Um, <laughs> It was distilled uh, 12th of December 2013. Um, it's seven years old and it's sweet, fruity and mellow. That is the flavour profile. So as as ever with these podcasts, you guys have tasted them before. I haven't, so I'm tasting them for the first time. Uh, I do know your music choices. I've, I've, I've got those in advance, but I've never actually tasted the whiskey. I know, I'm just trying to remind myself. So... I do have some more in-depth tasting notes, so we'll go for some of those, the 150. Conversation lubrication. Coconut oil and polished oak beckoned us towards rosemary, basil and thyme, while butterscotch and strawberries combined with nutmeg and allspice. On the palate, flavours exploded with toffee, fudge and tropical fruits wrapped in herb-infused olive oil, marzipan and dark chocolate. Uh, With water, the aromas opened greatly, now abound with caramel, nuts and leather in a cigar box alongside maple syrup and vanilla pods. They're covering a few bases there. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But... um, How did you find this one, Inka? So it was bringing back a lot of memories for me. And that's why I ended up 
going with the song that I went with. Um, but I wasn't loving it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a bit odd. It's a completely different nose from the last one. If the last one was full of fruits and, you know, yeah. quite pungently fruity on the yes. nose. Yeah. This is really completely different. In fact, I don't think I've ever nosed a whiskey that smells like this before. I was thinking an old house where I used to live mm -hmm. and, you know, damp basement with, you know, this like jam jars or chutney, you know, stored and that kind of old house smell. It's just... So you think this whiskey smells of damp? <laughs> <laughs> it smells of like, yeah, history. It's, it, it is a strange nose. Maybe I'm sort of getting um, kind of bed linen or something like that. And maybe that's just my insanity, but it's bizarre. There's it's a bizarre nose. There's kind of sharp. There is, there is. Maybe it's damp bed linen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but how about you, uh, Jen? How... I struggled with this one on the nose when I first, like, I first nosed it. It was like a, just a wall of candy floss, like cheap, fluffy sugar. It's as a I'm, bit sugary, yeah. Yeah, as I was, I was like nosing it now, I'm getting like candy floss and furniture polish. Mm. <laughs> I didn't get the sweetness to begin with, but maybe it's your suggestive candy floss there. But it is, it is, and I am sort of at the back of my nose, I'm getting a bit more sweetness. Yeah. Right, let's, let's have a taste. Mm. Mm. Front of the mouth, I'm getting a bit of your furniture polish. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's it's quite mellow for me anyway it's quite mellow in the back of the throat and I haven't quite got my palate on it yet It's I, I think it may be apart from your classic kind of Bushmills and so on Irish whiskies yeah. I don't think I've I've never I don't think I've ever had an Irish single malt before so or you know as I say first first fill X rye barrel yeah. it's, it's definitely unique mm -hmm. Mm. yeah it's different Sweet, fruity, and mellow. I'm getting the sweet, not so fruity. Mm -hmm. Quite mellow though, compared to the first one was pungent, wasn't it? It was like, whoa, yeah, full body and syrupy and chewy. Yes. Spicy, the rice, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doing its job. Mm -hmm. So, Enko, which tune did you go for? Well, Leonard Cohen, mm -hmm. Dance Me to the End of Love. Yeah. And that was because of how I mentioned about the old house. So I used to live in this big old house with my mum. And the basement was really scary, and we had this like forty-person sauna in there, and it was <laughs> a forty-person sauna. Yeah, they used to use it during the war, and all the soldiers would come and sauna. Oh right. Yeah, so it was had this kind of damp kind of it smell, but like also some sort of weird fruitiness, maybe from the sauna. I don't mm -hmm. know. Um, and then on the palate, I'm getting this. <laughs> it's really weird. Like, you know those cushions or like little pillows that has herbs inside that you put in the microwave and then you put it on your like sore bits, sore muscles and okay, stuff. Okay, yeah, I'm aware of those, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> Not mom... that I've ever tried one, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, we used to have those as well. And like that just reminds me of my mom and living in this house. And my mom actually just passed away in June. Oh, I'm sorry to so, hear that. Uh, yeah, that's okay. But like, it's that house, it, like all these memories were coming to me. And she used to listen, Leonard Cohen, like just absolutely loved him. Mm -hmm. And it, this house and the smell and stuff reminds me of the house and the music in the background. But also when my mom would go out, like go on dancing with boys, mm -hmm. <laughs> I would stay at home with my friend and we would pretend that like one of us was Leonard Cohen and do the singing, like miming, and the other one is like pretending to drink wine or something like, oh. <laughs> so oh. this one. Wow, oh, the, what, like, what a brilliant story, what a brilliant memory as well. <laughs> uh, I, I just, I love the idea of uh, uh, teenagers pretending to be Leonard Cohen, if you were yeah, teenagers, or, like maybe, ten year or maybe, right, even younger, yeah. right, okay. <laughs> Uh, I mean, that's quite advanced, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. The Leonard Cohen at age 10 and cut, that, you know, that explains a lot. Yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah, like a private... That's thing. parents with a good record collection, <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah. Dance Me to the End of Love. Um, it's 80s Leonard Cohen. Mm -hmm. So there's synths and drum machines and so on. And it's from the album Various Positions as well, which is a very Leonard Cohen <laughs> yeah. uh, title. Um, but uh, until until you paired this up, I, I mean, I'm a Leonard Cohen fan, but from the kind of 60s and 70s, I wasn't aware of this song. Oh, right. So it was, it was the first time I actually heard it. So and it's a great piece of music, and obviously the yeah. voice and the lyrics are oh, wonderful. I just love his voice, it's beautiful. Mm. But well, like this whiskey is just 
it I goes think, with it. Yeah, I think so. And, and Jen, like where, where did you go with this musically? Well, with this one, I kind of used the name for inspiration mm -hmm. a little bit different uh, to the other pairings. And this one, um, I went with Led Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. You and I, Inca, have been chatting quite a bit about Led Love Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin. Yeah, Me too. I'm a huge Led Zeppelin Zepp fan, yeah. We recently were lucky enough to see Metallica together in Florence, which was amazing. And the support act was Greta Van Fleet. Again, amazing. And, you know, maybe talk a bit more about Greta Van Fleet, but it was very reminiscent to me of Led Zeppelin, which had made me, you know, think about my early whiskey drinking. When I was a teenager, I was into a lot of um, 60s and 70s rock because the music was changing from, you know, my love of Guns N' Roses, Motley Crue, and it was kind of changing into kind of more indie. I wasn't so sure about it, and I looked back to lots of, you know, as I say, that kind of older rock, and I could have picked anything from, you know, Led Zeppelin, Two, which is my favourite Led Zeppelin album. Sorry, I'm not bored. No, 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 <laughs> go for it. Conversation. I, I like love Led Zeppelin, it. yeah. So yeah. much. Um, and I found it really difficult to choose a song because I love so many of them for different reasons. You know, um, Immigrant Song, amazing. Although now it has a kind of twofold love for me because I'm a big Jack Black fan and I don't know if you've seen the video that Jack Black dresses up as Thor in tiny little speedos and has this as the soundtrack to it. So it's, ah, my, ori yeah. <laughs> so it's my original love of the song and Jack Black all blended together. So that was my choice. Fair, fair yeah. enough. Well, Immigrant Song, a fine <laughs> piece of music from Led Zeppelin 3. Isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. And, um, so I went rogue because I love Led Zepp too, but Immigrant Song pipped, pipped him to the post. Oh, it's, it's an amazing track. And for Led Zepp, one of the snappy ones, it's about two and a half minutes long, isn't it? Exactly. So I tend to listen to it like three times in a row when yeah. I put it on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you kind of want an extended remix, don't you? Um, yeah, and it was, uh, they didn't release many singles. They were an albums band, but that was actually one of their few. Um, great choice, Jen. Um, now, how does it fit the whiskey? Why was it was it more that childhood memory? So you were actually both coming from it from a kind of memory. For me, it was um, it was more the name that I was inspired by. The whiskey itself didn't you know light my fire. I found it on the palate, kind of oaty and kind of fennel. So I was interesting to, interested to hear the herbal um, you know tasting, tasting note, notes. Yeah. Um, so for me, like the whiskey wasn't amazing, but I loved the name of it and just went off that for my pairing. Yeah, um, I am. I'm not one for you know talking bad of these excellent whiskies, but this is one of my least favourite drams I've had at the whis at the whiskey society. Uh, it's just it's now. I mean, it's it's part of this you know sweet, fruity, and mellow flavour profile, but I'm not finding it particularly mellow or particularly fruity. No. Yeah, it's so. quite sweet, as as you say, especially on the nose now that I'm getting. But it's got this kind of leathery. For me, it's got a kind of satchely leathery kind of flavour to it, and it's spicy. It's spicy, exactly. It's more spicy rather than mellow. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, I, not my favourite, but two excellent songs, and thanks for introducing me to that uh, that Leonard Cohen number as well. What was the first music that you? first enjoyed that you obviously if you're 10 years old listening to Leonard then perhaps that but <laughs> yeah. what what were you first introduced to and what did you first oh like? Oh my god so I got two stories one was my first ever like CD like of course I was listening to some like Backstreet Boys or something when mm. I was younger but oh my mom bought me um Bon Jovi album I'm just I've just loved them ever since mm -hmm. and it's that's why I have a bunch of it coming up. Yeah, we've got one of those coming up. <laughs> um, and then another one was, I was, yeah, about 10 or 11. I was on holiday with my mum and I heard this song like reggae, but I didn't always didn't know it was reggae. And I'm like, oh, mum, what's this song? Can you go and ask her and find out what this is so we can go and buy the album? And it was Bob Marley. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> Buffalo Soldiers and all that. Oh, and I just. Superb. One of my absolute favourites, Bob Marley, I and mean, a, a, a genius, a brilliant songwriter, a great singer, and, and a force of nature as well. So Bon Jovi and Bob Marley are yeah. two, two sort of entry points for you. Yeah, Crossroads was the, the album. Right, okay. And how about you, Jen? Where, where did you, was it rock from the off, or...? 
Not, not really. Um, like always, music in my house. My grandfather and my mum super musical, like playing the piano. So lots of like traditional Scottish, old classics. Um, they played in the piano. My mum's a huge Van Morrison fan. Lots of Astral Weeks. Um, some country influence, um, like Dolly Parton, John Denver, a lot of when I was growing up. But just from a, like a really young age, was obsessed with getting smash hits, was obsessed with <laughs> like listening to the top 40, top of the pops. And to me, music was life, it was everything. So growing up on Mull, like whatever music I could grab from you know anywhere, it was like felt very important to me and a huge part of life. Mm -hmm. um, and it was probably, growing up in the 80s you know and uh, like so much um, of the the rock influence then um, has sort of started creeping in yeah, yeah i think a huge part of my psyche still lives in the late 80s right <laughs> with motley <laughs> crew uh, and, uh, and guns and roses and yeah. all yeah. the guns of the times yeah absolutely <laughs> i tell you what before we move on to dram number three i am going to try this dram that I've just kind of slagged off a little bit, I'm sorry about that, this conversation lubrication. I'm going to try it with a dash of water to see That's if a good idea. That, that, changes, a good idea. that normally... changes anything. I've given it actually quite a dab of water there. I'm We've... going to see, because sometimes a whiskey that you might not be that fond of, you add some water to Absolutely. it, it opens things out. And Definitely. Yeah. The nose certainly changes. We, we've yet to find a whiskey that we actually like better with water. Oh wow, that's so, interesting. Yeah, I know, we always want to try and especially with Malt Whiskey Society, it's just, they're stronger, but I, I always find it disappointing. Yeah. So maybe this is the first one. But. Try it, because <laughs> I, 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 it's still not my favorite dram I've ever had, but with the water, oh. it, it, don't you think the nose has Definitely changed? Definitely much sweeter on the nose. Mm. And actually, when you when certainly for me when I've just tasted it, it's it's much more sweet, mm. fruity, and mellow. Ah, uh, no, it's just like it's caramel kind of wafers or something. Mm. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it? That just shows you um, a lot. A lot of my friends, if when we go to the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, they they will have water with absolutely every dram. They're like, oh, sixty percent drams. I can't be drinking that stuff straight. Whereas I, I'm pretty much like you. I think it sometimes dilutes and takes away from that, you know, strength and yeah. f you know but fortitude of the flavors as well as the the alcohol. You know, I think air is the the key here. Just you know, take a sip at first and then just give it a couple of minutes and then try it again and it's completely transformed. Yeah, I I I, I added quite a bit of water and I'm actually quite enjoying that now. I think it brings out a depth of flavour in the palate. Often I'll find I lose something with the addition of water, but I feel like kind of maybe more citrusy and pastry flavours. I'm getting pastry off this now as yeah. well. Yeah. Mm. Thank mm. you for that prompt, Vic, because I do think actually that... That's actually the first one. I think we need to high-five for that. This is okay, a can I high-five you? Right, brilliant. This is a okay. moment in Whiskey Sister history. Yes. yes. <laughs> you, you, so you found a whiskey that you prefer with a dab of water. Yeah. That's great. Well, um, I mean, yeah, you know, all negativity aside, it was a spectacular dram. It just maybe wasn't quite right for our palates. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and it's always important to stress that, isn't it? Because mm. yeah. it's, you know, so subjective. Yeah. That's the thing. I think when doing reviews, it's just, it's not like what we do on the podcast. It's not really a review as such. It's just our tasting notes. But like, just even between things. us, yeah. it's completely different. We get different tasting notes. We prefer different whiskies. Yeah. It's that's, just shows that's what that makes the world go around. I mean, uh, and you know, there will be people watching or listening to this episode or previous episodes of Maltz Music and gone, I don't agree. I would never pair that music with that dram or, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and surely all what? whiskey needs to go with, you know, folk music, traditional music and fiddle players and so on. Yeah. And I paired up, you know, the um, juicy oak and vanilla profile with the uh, uh, roots reggae. So I had like, you know, and I, I imagined myself sipping it in Jamaica, I listening to reggae really in a square with a sound system. And um, now other people would be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> You're insane. <laughs> Let's move on to dram number three. And we're on to 108.49, which is called a, a Particular Kind of Beauty. It's a Speyside. It's a second-filled char, uh, second charred red wine barrique. It is 65.3%. I think that might be one of the strongest drams 
I've ever encountered here at the Society. 10 years old, distilled uh, 27th, 10th, uh, that's 27th of October 2011, and it is peated. That is the profile. So you'll be loving this one, Inca, I would imagine. <laughs> I know, I'm like already like, <laughs> you're smiling. Excited, you're I'm excited. so excited. Uh, oh, that's it going into the glass. And I'll do some tasting notes here very quickly while you nose away. So, a, a particular kind of beauty. The nose was highly elusive to stormy notes of wet rigging, creel net soaked in seawater, crushed aspirin, and pickle, <laughs> pickling brine. Crushed aspirin. I actually s stalled there, didn't I? I was like, crushed aspirin? Um, a first aid kit. Uh, mercurochrome and gauze dipped in antiseptic some reduction brought impressions of pickle ginger wasabi soy sauce sushi rice and gravel axe with dill uh, also jalapeno poppers and camphor so again a few bases covered there but we're getting that a lot of emphasis on the first aid kit in the aspirin I, I was just like Shocked because obviously I didn't know those tasting notes, and then my song saw it. Junk song saw it. <laughs> Bad medicine. It's like, what? <laughs> Exactly. Well done, Inca. Oh my God. <laughs> it's a perfect match. Yeah, bad medicine. Uh, so, so, yeah, okay. Well, you, you've just announced it. Bad Sorry. medicine, Bon Jovi. <laughs> that's, your, that's your choice for this one. We, we know about your lifelong love of Bon Jovi. Uh, okay, I have so to... why, why pair it? I mean, you've obviously the, something to do with those tasting Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't see those. So it was just my own. Because, you know, this was... Uh, to, well, yeah, on the nose, it was much more sweeter and like it was getting teriyaki sauce and like ribs and all sorts of different things. But on the palate, for me, there's this kind of salted licorice cough medicine that we do, like we have in Finland. Yeah, I like those little sweets. In fact, I've got some in my um, <laughs> cupboard. I've probably uh, from that trip to Finland, yeah. I bought ton. T what is it? No, is it called like salmiakki or? So? Oh, no, salmiakki is a sweet. We just eat it as a candy. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 But, this but that's is, a salted licorice, yes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's the ones I've got. And yeah. it's actually, we used to make it in, as a, on a chemistry class, so it's not really <laughs> sweet. It's like a potion. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't eat too much of that. Um, but yes, the cough medicine is like a liquid one. But anyway, there was that on the palate, and mm, I don't know, it's just giving me Bon Jovi attitude. Yeah. Other. Well, um, now, having never tasted, or I've not even tasted it yet, but on the mm. nose, I wouldn't even know this was a peated whiskey on the nose particularly, because usually you get that kind of salty, briny, almost kind of sometimes fishy kind of oh, yeah. on, a, on a PT whiskey and you get the smoke I don't really get no, it's I more suppose a little bit of salt a little bit of salt now it's more sticky ribs yeah. you know roasted pineapples so bad medicine went well I'm going to I'm going to have a sip and see <laughs> and see if I can imagine Bon Jovi in his leather trousers striding forth across the stage <laughs> Oh wow, the palate is completely different from the nose for me, anyway. Yep. Wow. It's very salty. Yep. Saltiness. Do you know what? Because I've had tubs of those salmiaki sweets, the candies. <laughs> I got the sweet ones and the salty ones. Yeah. I got a tub of each, and I've still got like some left in both oh of them. Oh my god. And I must have been in Finland, like a decade ago maybe longer oh, and wow. I've still got them because they last for ages and <laughs> you can only eat a few at a time yeah but I can see that I can f taste that licorice salty licorice yeah and they're kind of like it's quite aggressive yeah and oh, they, yeah, it's not I've, for everyone I've, I've handed those to people and they've gone no that's no not I know I do that as well as a joke it's uh, quite funny <laughs> so bad medicine Bon Jovi 1988 the follow-up to Slippery When Wet, a big one for you. Jen, where are we going with this one? With this one for me, I was quite inspired by the aromas on the nose. Like yourself, Vic, like, I didn't get hugely like peated aromas. However, lots of like nature smells. Mm -hmm. I was saying to Inca, like, like forest, springtime forest, damp soil, mm -hmm. you know, and it was making me think a lot of nature and that links to my song choice, just some of the lyrics within mm -hmm. it. 
Um, so although it's not like my favourite type of whiskey, I was really enjoying it on the nose and it was quite evocative of my like imagination. I was thinking of like American, you know, national parks and huge big pine trees and those like, I've never been to a national park in America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's just obsessed about America. I'm just obsessed with America. <laughs> yeah. Have you been to America full stop? I have. Um, I've been uh, on a couple of occasions, but like I'm absolutely obsessed. I want to go to so many states and experience lots of different things. And this is how I imagine the national parks would smell. Yeah. <laughs> And the song I've picked makes reference to like Boulder, Colorado. So that mm -hmm. was my like strong link. So it's interesting to hear the other tasting notes. I didn't get as much sweetness for me. It was lots of kind of a slight kind of TCP, but very much nature smells. I'm getting a, a, a pininess. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think uh, there's there's pine in there for sure. And the, and the tune you went for is the Highwayman and I suppose their signature tune, Highwayman. Now the Highwaymen, I was, I immediately, when, when you sent me your choices, I was like, who are they? And then I went and investigated and of course it was Waylon Jennings, Johnny Cash, Chris Christopherson, and who's the fourth one? Willie Nelson, of course. Um, Wouldn't we love to share a dram with those gentlemen? Would they, you know, yeah. if they were all alive right now? What a lineup! Like yeah. that just blows my mind. Yeah, I'm a huge Johnny Cash fan, but like I love the High Women, just that combination. And for me, there was a lot of like lovely um, sort of blended elements for me when I was thinking of you know the aromas the flavours and that made me think of the high women um, I, I kind of prior to doing this um, I thought I'm going to pick a Johnny Cash song but again on tasting this I thought no I'm going to high women it's funny how you do that I was saying that earlier you, you, know, you think this one goes perfectly with that piece of music you play them we play the piece of music, you drink the whiskey, and then go, uh, do you know what? No, it doesn't yeah, fit. Exactly. I'm going to try a different song. And, and, <laughs> yeah. and there's a little bit of flicking around and finding what you're going to play. And then, ah, that's the one. Now, I, well, I think, so, I apologize. Bon Jovi was released in 1985. This was released in 1988. And I would have been at school at that time. And I wasn't really aware of this project going on I'm a huge fan of all four of those singers now yeah. especially Johnny Cash and I've actually been to one of uh, Willie Nelson's bars in Texas oh, as well he's got he's so got a bar good. or two one in the sort of mountains <laughs> was, you would have loved it as well oh. perfect, per <laughs> a perfect whiskey drinking bar in, oh. in uh, near Austin Texas whiskey sisters road trip road trip Season oh. three. Season three, we're in the States. <laughs> well, get, get up to Willie Nelson's bar. I can't remember what yes. it's called now. You'll be able to Google it. Oh, um, but I, I, I think, uh, you know, brilliant storytelling, brilliant song construction, brilliant voices, all four of them in there. Yes. It's, it's a great piece of music to go with this whiskey, I think. Um, yeah. All the different elements of this whiskey and the different elements of them as artists, and also the song itself depicting, I guess, esoteric themes like have been here before, like about the soul. I love all that. So yeah, yeah. I've, been, I've been around America a bit, but not every. I mean, it's vast. Uh, both coasts. Well, New York on the East Coast, and I've done a lot of California, and I like the South as well. So Austin yes. and New Orleans and That's Memphis right. and you know Nashville and so on. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, do a road trip, Jen. You need to do it. Now you just mentioned the, the Whiskey Sisters on tour. Tell us about the podcast. Why did you start it? What do you do in it? What's it all about? I don't, well, okay, so I was writing about all these different spirits and like tequila, gin, all these things, and then I got into whiskey and actually loved it. Just loved it. And I don't know, I just had this feeling like I can be quite funny, but people just don't know me. <laughs> like, I would like to have a podcast, like, talk about whiskey, but in a, like, a nice, fun way mm -hmm. rather than just, mm, it's like educational, but also like sharing our journey and we're just giving little fun bits. But I, I didn't want to do it alone. Yeah. Do you think the whiskey world is a bit male-centric and a bit, and perhaps a bit kind of stuffy and macho in a way? No. No? I don't okay, think it's anymore. Right. Like, I think... No, I think... Um, how does it... Like, I, I don't think the gender thing is, is, is quite irrelevant at the moment, but... <laughs> It's just like everything is a bit of the same, I guess. Like it's stuffy in that way. Not stuffy is like old men drinking whiskey, but more just like everyone's just doing the same thing. Okay. I guess. So I think, 
yeah. So then I spoke to Jen, and instantly, as soon as I just mentioned whiskey podcast, and she's like, yes, let's do it. <laughs> and we were high. For, uh, actually, this happened in uh, Bath Street and um, Scott Smalls Whiskey Society. Yeah. Oh, right, in Glasgow. Right. Yeah, that's where it all began. Yeah, yeah. that's all where it all began. Because I never considered, you know, becoming a co-host of a podcast at all. But on meeting Inca, like her shared passion for whiskey, I just like we just wanted to speak about whiskey yeah. all the time and in shared company it felt like a little bit not not in a rude way but like frustrating because there was so much to talk about so when Inca kind of proposed like would you be interested in that and I'm like wait I get to like spend time with you chat about whiskey learn more about it and drink it I'm in <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and Talk us through some of the the episodes. I've listened to a, a couple of them. I really enjoyed the Lefroy Lag, Lagavulin one. The oh, sort of battle, battle of the, of the yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I learned loads of really interesting stuff from that as well, which which is is fabulous. What what was the kind of concept behind apart from yeah, let's do a podcast about whiskey I mean there's music in there in terms of you've got theme music mm -hmm. and the, the logo is kind of almost <laughs> Iron Maiden-esque thank uh, you for noticing uh, uh, yeah so you've got you've got the kind of Whiskey Sisters logo which is kind of rock and there's a rock theme tune and so on you guys kind of chat away about different subjects but how do you plan a series, for example? Well, obviously we choose topics that we want to cover and then we leave always room for something will come up. Mm -hmm. And whatever works, like we got kind of the balance of us just chatting about whiskey and telling the stories or the histories or something, I don't know, different topics and then tasting the whiskey and just offering our tasting notes, latest whiskey news, sticking our noses into latest whiskey news. We wanted there to be structure yeah. there when we were planning it out. We wanted it to, to be conversational and about our whiskey journeys, but to have like a kind of structure so that for people that maybe were more interested in, you know, learning a bit more about the background of what the subject yeah. matter was, that there was something there and the facts, but to kind of bring our own slant to it and to kind of stick to that structure, which I, I don't know, I think it works. Yeah, well. I like the little whiskey facts. It's just, you know, if you want to impress your fellow drinkers, um, and anyway, because we keep the same structure on every episode, so some people might just fast forward because they just want to hear the tasting notes or, you know, like you don't have to listen to the whole episodes, but hopefully there's something for everyone. Mm -hmm. And because we are kind of different stages on our whiskey journey, <laughs> but we're sharing it together. So we're also like trying to just, yeah, I think it's like just saying that whiskey is for everyone. Yes. And yeah. yeah. Just, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a newbie or you really know stuff or, you know, let's just all enjoy the journey basically well i mean that's what this podcast is about as well i'm certainly no kind of whiskey snob and i don't want any of the guests to feel like that or to oh. feel that themselves uh, it's a bit esoteric it's a bit weird pairing up music and a taste but it seems to work everyone enjoys it you've enjoyed it I right know. That's absolutely great. Yeah. i think it's really i think it's i think it's a beautiful like process to invite people to do to sort of expand that and I think a lot of people are sitting at home enjoying whiskey and maybe you know, whether they're reading a book or listening to different music. And I think it's, yeah, I think yeah. it's really important to, you know, to bring that component to it. Any particular highlights of uh, episodes that you've put out that you would point people towards? Oh, if you've never heard the Whiskey Sisters podcast, go and check out that one. Which one would you point oh, people towards? What do you think? For me, okay, this is not even a deliberate teaser, but season two is about to launch. I almost had to be tasered with extreme excitement <laughs> for the first episode of season two. Inca is on point, she's on time, she's finished, she keeps me right, but I was extremely excited. So for me, although it's not released as yet, it will be soon. Mm -hmm. 21st of September. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's like the highlight for me. Okay. <laughs> and, and can you give us a bit of a clue? Because... By the time this podcast goes out, your one might already be released, to be honest. Your, this will probably go out in October. So although we're going to still focus on Scotch, we wanted to feature Metallica's <laughs> Whiskey Blackened. And, and we speak to Rob Dietrich, the master blender from Blackened American Whiskey. So I nearly combusted and I'm quite proud that I managed to actually speak to him <laughs> yeah. in the interview. Oh, I know. I'm going to make you feel really slightly sick here and say that I've interviewed Metallica once before <gasps> what? Uh, and James Hetfield and Kirk Hammett 
and uh, they were absolutely lovely and they invited us to watch them from the side of the stage which was incredible as well and in in amongst i know i'm sorry for this we'll get we'll get a fan for you um the, the in amongst all of the serious questions and the proper interview and we got listener questions this is through uh, i was on bbc radio one at the time and we got listener questions and one of the questions was if you were a milkshake what <laughs> what flavor would you be and this is you know james hetfield you know uh, and and kirk oh, Hammett, I'm you sure know he's a vanilla. And, well they kept a straight face they completely kept a straight face and james hetfield's like uh chocolate chocolate maybe a little bit of banana in there uh, and uh, and 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 Kirk Hammett, who's quite camp, as you know, he was yeah. like strawberry with a little bit of peach, and it was it, it was so. I mean, there are many bizarre things that have happened to me in my life, but asking uh, Metallica which flavor of milkshake they would be was oh a particular highlight, and they and they loved the interview, and it was great. It went really well. They were super nice as well. Uh. So. Um, and I, I, yeah, I've got a photo. I'll send you the photo, Jan. It's all, oh, all of us. Please do, please yeah. do. But I, I'd be interested. What what was Metallica's whiskey like? I mean, obviously, we'll find out through the podcast. But. I like. I expected myself to become taste blind with extreme excitement, but I thought, no, ground yourself and actually taste this. And I was astounded as to how much I enjoyed it. It wasn't overly sweet, as I've found some American whiskies. Um, to be, I've not had, I've not had a huge amount of experience, but I thought, you know, the the blend with, you know, rye. Yeah. I thought it was beautifully balanced. I thought it went down really well, um, and I was absolutely impressed. Okay, yeah. so this is the first I, episode of series yeah. two. Uh, you it, tasting well, Metallica's whiskey. Sorry, yeah, Inky. You sorry, were... no, I was being more finished. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be shit because all the, <laughs> all the like. I'm oh, sorry. That's all right. We can swear crap. a bit, or you um, can. <laughs> <laughs> like normally all these like celeb endorsed spirits aren't so good and I've tried quite a few and mm, they're always gonna leave you hanging but actually I was like possibly was surprised because the rye mix yeah. in with the bourbon it was there was much more to it and it wasn't so sweet and kind of boring it was more layered and yeah definitely it was I was happy to say that I actually like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, so phew. Uh, <laughs> but like, you know, I'm finished, so I, I would always say if I don't like something. So. And the master distiller had also worked in music, so that was incredibly exciting oh, for yeah. me as well. So. Um, well, I think we should move on to our fourth and final drama of this episode of Malts and Music. So we've had Bon Jovi and the High Women going with a particular kind of beauty, and guess what? That dram's finished. Oh, so good. Mm. Cheers to that. Mm. I did eventually find the sweetness in that dram as well. Mm. Initially, I was I was with you, Jen. I didn't didn't, but towards the end, the sweetness was coming out of it. Definitely, it's funny it's how a dram again as well. changes from beginning to end, doesn't mm -hmm. it? The evolution of it, yeah. yeah. But isn't it with the same with the songs? Like you hear it first time, you, you know, you don't instantly like a song straight away, but That's you hear true. it a few times, and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, it's growing on me, and then it's, all of a sudden you're like, oh, and I listen to it on repeat. Yeah, um, I, the amount of, I mean, now with the internet, you can f click on a song, listen for two seconds, and go, don't like it, move on. But when you had your pocket money or whatever it is, you buy that record, and because you like the single, you'd take it home, you'd listen to it, and go, I don't like it. <laughs> Yeah. But it's the only one you had, yeah. uh, so you have to listen to it three, four, five times. And by about the third, fourth, fifth listen, you're like, actually, uh, and then by how, ten listens in, I love this, my favourite record. Yeah. All right, okay, let's move on to dram number four, which is Sweet Petrichor. It's a Speyside, it's a first fill bourbon, uh, it's 60.6% uh, alcohol volume it's a 10 year old it's distilled on the 1st of november 2010 and it is part of the spicy and sweet profile um, i'll do some tasting notes i'll let you nose it and have a have a sniff there we go sweet petrichor imagine calling a whiskey that let's let's read a bit about I it i know i actually had to google what that means me too and i love the meaning which also brings me to my song choice slightly <laughs> but I love that meaning yeah 
Oh, here we go. A rich aroma of sandalwood aftershave. Fresh linens in a warm cupboard. Summery forest air. Trampled dandelions and sunflower seeds popping in a hot iron pan. Beyond that, we got white asparagus, runny honey and dried sage. Water continued this vibrant and fresh evolution with butter bean hummus, light olive oil, <laughs> lemon peel, trail mix and flapjack with maple syrup. Again, you're going from butter bean hummus to maple syrup with dried sage and asparagus and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> Sandalwood aftershave. Uh, uh, okay, how are you, fi how are you finding the nose then, Inka? Yeah, I'm struggling with this one. It wasn't my... It wasn't your favorite of the four? No. It's very fruity, very sweet. Um, I was getting I'm a getting lot... a more of it. I am. I know it's part of the spicy and sweet um, profile, so you, I'm getting more of the spiciness on oh, the nose. Oh, really? Oh, for me, it was like literally, you know those tinned fruit salads, and you open it, and it's like, oh, just like... Right intense smell and this sugar syrup that is like infused with orchard fruits and cherries and stuff it's like mm. oh, I don't know too much for me I'm I, I mean getting a bit of sweetness on the nose but it's definitely spicier for me Jen what how do you feel like I feel super intrigued by this on the nose I was getting like red berry syrup interesting to hear you say like the fruit syrup Inca but I also was taken to the farmyard I kind of fermented almost, yeah. si <laughs> almost <laughs> silage smells I was like whoa where am I going here and found like really contrasting aromas yeah um, I think now you just say that I think I can I can get yeah, that yeah like countryside yeah like, like a really warm day countryside yeah manure, manure. i've got manure. the wellies on yeah, yeah. But i'm not getting manure <laughs> <laughs> thankfully <laughs> <laughs> that's whiskey taste when, it smells when, like manure when I, when I grew up in all there was like some like pretty summertime farm smells as opposed to your intense like yeah, that's not so good farm but smell. Do you know what I find? I'm sorry to go off off, off the off piece a little bit here, but do you know when you, you smell a sort of really pungent, um, like farmyard manure aroma if you're driving through the countryside or something like that? To me, I've realised it smells like 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 pungent, stinky cheese. You know, when I when I open, if I've got yeah, like Stilton really and all sorts of yeah. like Roquefort and Gorgonzola, yeah. if I've got any of those in the fridge and I open the door, it's like, whoa, it kind of smells a bit like manure. You know, I suppose they're from yeah. cows. So. so for me, it's not like, like nasty, cheesy farmyard. It's more like <laughs> summertime, kind of romantic farmyard. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting spiciness and now some mouth. more sweetness on the nose. I've not even tasted it. Should we go in for a taste? Yeah. Right. Okay. Slange Cheers. Slange. 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 Mm, that Ooh. texture is pretty good. Yeah, nice texture. Yep. First um, taste on the palate for me is quite dry, actually. It's almost has a, a kind of similar kind of dry white wine. You know, if you, if you if you drink a dry white wine, it almost sucks the moisture out of your mouth a little bit. Um, I can I can really get that. I might that may change on sip number two. So sweet petrichor one one three point six zero and. Jen, we'll go for your choice on this one. So I went, because I found the aromas and on the palate so contrasting, and it was taking me by surprise, I had to go for the goddess that is Kate Bush. Right. I feel super lucky to have grown up, you know, as I, say, as I said earlier, with music of the 80s, Kate Bush just like bursting onto my screen mm -hmm. with Babushka and her makeup and... And I find her like so contrasting, like beautiful, but maybe sometimes like abrasive. The vocals like stunning, yet like oh, shocking. Yeah. And it really made me think of Kate Bush when I tasted this whiskey. The kind of shocking yet pleasant, contrasting aspects of the dram. So mm -hmm. that's the reason for my choice. And she's uh, one of the artists of the moment, thanks to uh, that uh, uh, Stranger Netflix Things. show. Uh, yeah, Stranger Things. It's, it's, she's been introduced to a whole new generation, which is amazing. Great, yeah. and quite rightly so as well. She, so one of the greatest artists, I think. I love that, actually. Yeah. And linking to Metallica, they were also on that show and have had a resurgence to a whole really? new generation yeah. due to that. So I I love that. I think Kate Bush is like 
I respect her so much in term, terms of her artistry, what she kind of brought to the music industry. And I just think she's like so fascinating. She like sparks my curiosity and there's a lot of mystery around her. And this drama, I'm like, like mm. what? For me, there was it was kind of a mysterious combination. Yeah, I'm getting a bit of mystery mm. with yeah. this drama as well. Yeah. Actually, now when you explained it, because you know we didn't really talk about this too much, but like yeah, I, yeah, I I can get your yeah, especially on the palette and I, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. There's a so, lot going on, isn't and there? And hounds of love is that the, the hounds on the farmyard? Perhaps is that the, the hounds <laughs> ch chasing the, the sheep around? So. <laughs> Lo the, the hounds of love ch chasing <laughs> the, loving the sheep uh, I, I suppose it was more like it, the 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 whiskey in itself made me think of her as an artist and I just selfishly chose that because I love the song I love a lot of her songs I suppose uh, Running Up the Hill is like really popular just now as you've mentioned yeah. linked to Stranger Things and I thought Hounds of Love as an album is amazing and as a track you know how it starts off with the male voice and then comes in with her vocal and there's like, oh, what's happening? Oh, it's, aston <laughs> it's astonishing production as well. Isn't it? I I've realised that apart from Led <laughs> Zepp, all three of your choices are from the 80s as well, which you, you did mention. <laughs> yeah, it's... And I, this is 85, very um, Hounds of Love, title track to the album, it's having a massive resurgence. It's astonishing. Yeah. And it's. I think that 80s production was a bit dated in the 90s and maybe the early 2000s. Yeah. But that kind of sound yeah. is coming back, isn't it? And See, I we think get a time are... machine like 1987. I'm yeah. here. Who's in? Who's in? What does right. it mean, bo being born? Yeah. Yeah. I was born in 87. Uh, Can we believe this? <laughs> damn it! I've been to like a load of gigs by then. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. I was just. Well, I have a brother who's 13 years older to me, so he was like making CDs and cassettes for me from very young age. So he's been yeah. injecting his musical <laughs> stuff into me like... Well. <sighs> yeah. Well, what, what was your choice to go with Sweet Petrichor then for 11360? So it was Creta and Fleet mm -hmm. and Heat Above. And yeah. oh, just loved it. So Jen mentioned earlier we went to see Metallica and they were playing, they were one of the bands playing before Metallica and just... Oh, so good like because i've loved led zeppelin and they are like punk led zeppelin i you just like love because the music these days you know it's not so good it's not so good you know, there's loads the good of like stuff, but i i get it i get it there's you know. a lot of yeah so oh i love them like they're like yeah and they i always loved this kind of glam rock and oh he was wearing this vest and yeah I might have been shouting like sexy, sexy, like during the concert and stuff. So you weren't down the front, uh, <laughs> uh, like screaming obscenities at him, were you? Uh, no, there was engagement that was later on. with the whole day. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it was just so good and just uh, it's just bringing me to my Led Zeppelin days and oh, I don't know. And then Petrichor. So, like I said, I had to Google what it actually means, um, and. It means the scent of when it's been a hot day and it's been raining and that kind of oh, just the, the scent that's coming from the roads and how even how the music like the song starts and stuff and it's like you open the door you, you know you've been hankering down it's been raining hot day and you go out and you're just like walking the streets a little bit gallus going for a little little drink you know <laughs> It. It's funny how you you know you're, you the Petrichor has brought to mind your choice, and then you've got that kind of the the the, the smell of the farmyard or whatever. It's, it could be com compared. Yeah. You know, it's it's like yeah. earthy. It's it's yeah. it's the the scents and the flavors of the ground coming up. <laughs> yeah. And, and and these two, I'm going to be honest with Greta Van Fleet. Um, I <gasps> talk to us, mate. I couldn't. When I first heard them, I was just like, "What is the point in this band? It's like a Led Zeppelin copy band. It's like a tribute band." No. And I I can't really I can't really go with it because it's like he does the baby baby baby. Okay. He do, it's like he basically does Robert. I Pan. have to I have to admit when I listened, like I was just preparing for for the festival or for the concerts we're going. So I was listening and I'm like, oh, I don't know, like I said, Jen, like this is quite good, but I'm not sure about it. But seeing them live, oh my God, just like changed well, my whole, like, ah. Oh, and listening so to Heat good. Above, I mean, there's obviously the Led Zeppelin uh, influence, but it was, it felt like they'd transcended it a little bit. And I, if, if they continue to make records and move 
away from Led Zeppelin and make their own kind of sound, yeah. then I'd like them more. But I just it I love Led Zeppelin so much yes. and I just can't handle when a band just goes, let's just sound like that. Do exactly you, like that. Do you know that. what I've heard since? I don't know if it's true or not, but my partner's son like studied music, he's so into music, and I was like, ah, Greta Van Fleet, we were loving them. And he was like, I'm not a fan. And I said, why not? They sound like Zeppelin, like why not? And he was like, apparently, I don't know if this is true, they deny any sort of connection or inspiration. And I was like, what? No, no, no. What? Yeah. Like, no, shoot me down. You're breaking my heart right now. I'm sorry, Inca, but I'm bring, like, this is according to Ben. Apparently, they deny an inspiration. I'm like, all these youngins, excuse me. <laughs> like, there's such a straw. Like, yeah, no, oh, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to badmouth them any longer. But I mean, they are, they are a, a, like, to me, they're a copy band. I mean, it's like oh. it's it's too much, but but I'm let's move away from that. Let's yeah. move away from that because you two obviously also, love I just, them. Also, I just like no, but it's also just the glam rock thing. Like when I was younger at uni, I live in Finland. You know, a lot of the guys were very glam rocky. They had their bands and they had little stuff. Do you like hair. Hanoi Rocks? <gasps> They're finished band, oh aren't they? Michael Monroe. And... Yeah, I I went to a festival when I was. Um, 14, 15, and they did a gig. <laughs> and like Michael Monroe was climbing up the stage, like it was really dangerous. <laughs> and he's like, and all the guys are like, no, come back. And then, um, yeah, the singer was like, lost his, ma like, I think he was playing guitar, but no one could hear it because the block had come off and it was chaos. Yeah. yeah, good. Well, they, they had uh, links with Johnny Thunders and all sorts of some of the, you know, the yeah. sort of glammy punk rockers as well. There's but, also, um, like, yeah. Met, Met, I think it was one of the guys from Mertley Crew might have mm, had something to do with killing one of the oh, band members. Oh, that's right. Let's not go into that. That's yeah. contentious. We don't want to go to court. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, uh, <laughs> Let's like, do not label if, it. If, if people <laughs> want to go and check out the Malts and Music playlist, it's up there on Spotify. Uh, all the other guests that we've had on previous episodes, their choices are up there. But you'll also be getting Motley Crue, George Michael, Led Zeppelin, Leonard Cohen, The High Women, Bon Jovi, and with this dram, Kate Bush and Greta Van Fleet. You can make your own minds up about each of the tunes. Um, just as we come to the end of the podcast, um, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you both. I've really enjoyed okay. it. I knew it would be a hoot. I knew, to be honest, when the camera goes off, we'll just keep yeah. uh, we'll just keep on. One one for the road, Beck. Yeah, we'll we'll do one for the road. But what's what's you know the next few months, weeks, months, years uh, ahead have in store for the Whiskey Sisters? Oh, now? go on. You're dying to tell. Well, I would love there to be more of a blending actually between our shared passion of music and, you know, whiskey. That is really important yeah. to us, isn't it? As well, that's kind possible. of why we start the the season one with kind of link to music. But then we are also kind of quickly bringing it back to Scotch and, you know, just, I don't know, just like a little bit yeah. of for everyone, but we also maybe bringing a little bit more our character, our passion. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, oh, Vic, we've got a promotional video. Wait till you see our boots that we're wearing in it. And so you posted some things up on Instagram with oh, you doing some photo did. shoots and oh, bits yeah. and bobs. Yeah, we've unleashed ourselves somewhat. <laughs> and we would like to invite you on our yes. podcast as a guest. To talk wow, about I'd be, I'd be music. Okay, yeah, <laughs> anytime, anytime. Just give, give me a shout. Let's okay. let's do it. Let's do and it. Let's drink whiskey and listen to music and talk yeah. nonsense. Tell me that. Slanger. Slanger. Yeah. <laughs> Great to see you. And good luck with the the next series, series two coming out. At, uh, well, it will probably be out by the time this goes out. Um, Metallica's whiskey and all sorts of other good stuff. I hope you've enjoyed this whole process. You've enjoyed these quality drams from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society here in Leeds. You've done some work with the, the, the society before, haven't you? Yes, Inca? yeah, well, so I've written a few articles for the Unfiltered magazine and a new one will be coming up in autumn. And yeah, I've done a few little bits and bobs, so there will be a few things coming up. Well, you're doing a great thing and it's been a pleasure. Slanger, thanks Thank for, you. for being guests on Malts and Music. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah.